So you've launched your search campaigns. You got all your keyword research done. You organized them into a great account structure. You've got ad copy and landing pages that speak specifically to those keyword themes. And you've got all the different campaign settings just right so you know that you're gonna succeed, right? Well, unfortunately, the setup is a really big deal and it's important to make sure that that's set up properly, but it's also only part of the story. When it comes down to actually seeing good performance out of your search campaigns, there's lots of regular optimizations you need to make to get that good performance. So in this video, what we wanna talk through is a handful, even though probably not an exhaustive list, of the actions we take in search campaigns to make sure that we're always optimizing and trying to hit our client goals. This Pay Media Pros video is sponsored by Optio, the smarter, more efficient way to manage Google Ads. Optio's platform operates as a second pair of eyes on your accounts, regularly monitoring performance trends to make data-driven optimization suggestions for keyword strategies, bid optimizations, ad copy creation, and more. Better yet, you can save time by implementing their suggested changes directly in their user-friendly interface. Optio is extending their free trial period for Paid Media Pros viewers for 60 days, meaning you get two full months of testing and using Optio on your accounts before you pay a dime. If you're interested in giving it a shot, click the link on the screen right now or in the video description to get started. As I mentioned in the intro, this is not going to be an exhaustive list of optimization actions, but hopefully it should get you a lot of ground in terms of making sure that you're moving the needle and optimizing your client accounts. Here's the list of the five key areas that I'm gonna talk about today. We're not gonna to dive too terribly far into any individual one because I wanna make this a high level overview. Maybe we will in the future, but here are the things we're gonna go through, starting with keyword performance. When looking at keyword performance, there are four main filters that I use for my client accounts, and here they are. I always look for keywords that are high cost with no conversions, keywords with a high CPA, a low CPA, and then keywords with no volume. Now for this optimization, as well as most of the other ones, I'm gonna hop into a client account and try to show you some real world examples of how I go through these. This account has tons of volume coming through it, so hopefully every example that I work through will just live in the same account, so we'll have a good idea of the baseline cost per conversion. To review the keyword performance based on all of those filters, what I wanna go do is go to the Keywords tab, which is over here on the left, Keywords, and now I wanna start applying some filters. As I mentioned, the first one is gonna be high cost, no conversions. So the easiest thing to do is to add a filter, go for conversions, say that the value is less than 0.01 because this account does use the data-driven attribution model, meaning we can have partial conversions, change this to less than, and now click apply. Next, we're gonna do descending by cost, and here we go. Now we can start to see a handful of keywords that have some pretty high cost and no conversions associated with them. This is a good analysis to do either over a very long time frame or over a mid-range time frame. Every keyword is going to have its off weeks, off days, so doing anything shorter than a week, sometimes even two weeks, might be unfair to these keywords. But I'm looking at the last 30 days, and in an account where the average cost per conversion for non-brand is closer to $20, the fact that a lot of these keywords have over $200 in spend and no conversions means that something's up. I might cross check and just see what the lifetime performance of these keywords are, but overall, these would be really easy keywords to pause, reallocate that spend someplace else, especially if you noticed on the campaigns tab, you have a lot of campaigns that are capped by budget. So being able to save a lot of this money be really useful. The next filter is going to be high cost per conversion. So that means that it does need to have a conversion. So let's come back to this conversion filter, switch this to greater than, click apply. But then we need to create another filter for cost per conversion. As I mentioned, this account has about a $20 average non-brand cost per conversion. And we have a lot of float room in this account. So I'm gonna say five times the CPA is where I want that limit set. So we're gonna say $100, click apply. And now we filtered for all of the keywords that have conversions, but the cost per conversion is over five times our target CPA or our average CPA for now. At this point, we can do a handful of things. We can either look to optimize the bid or we can pause the keywords altogether, or we might wanna revisit the ad copy and make sure everything's performing well. Either way, we're finding lots of different keyword trends that we might want to adjust and look to kind of harness a little bit better. Now on the other end, we also wanna make sure that we're finding keywords that have really good performance. So let's filter for the low CPA terms. And I'm gonna say anything with a CPA that's less than half of our average. So let's go with 10, click apply. 
Same thing here, tons of keywords that fit into this realm. So again, we could either increase the bids, we could work on uncapping the budget for these campaigns, we could look at the different search terms and see what is converting, which we'll get to in a minute, decide if it needs to be new keywords, lots of different filters that we put on here to make sure that like the previous two filters, we're looking at keywords with not as good a performance. We also wanna make sure we're looking at keywords with good performance so we can lean into that. Now the last filter is going to be finding keywords with low volume that might just be bulking up the campaign. This is one that I don't do very often, complete transparency, maybe once a year, maybe twice a year, but it's really just to make sure that we don't have lots of additional keywords in here that aren't doing anything. And no, this is not taking Google's recommendation of a duplicate keyword or keywords with no volume. This is finding actual keywords in the account that are eligible to run and still aren't getting any volume. So to do that, I'm gonna clear these filters we have here and I'm gonna add a filter for impressions. Anything that is going to be less than one. Most of these keywords are paused. So let's make sure that we filter for just enabled. Okay, so we do have some keywords that fit in here and that's just in the last 30 days. So these might be keywords that just need to be paused. They're not really doing anything. So those are the pretty high level reviews we do on a regular basis for keywords. Look for bad performance that you can improve or pause. Look for good performance that you can lean further into or extrapolate from. And then look for keywords that don't have any volume that might just be bulking up the account unnecessarily. The second optimization is gonna feel pretty similar to keywords, but it's looking at the search terms rather than the keywords themselves. As you can see here, the three reviews that we do on a regular basis here are the exact same three that we do for keywords. So I'm not gonna go through them in the account, but rather just talk through why we might wanna find some versus another. First, high cost, no conversions. That's a no brainer. Something here is not matching up with what you were trying to sell for your customers or the leads you were trying to generate. So you probably need to add this as a negative to make sure that you're not spending money that's not working well. The second is high CPA you've got some conversions coming through these terms. So in some ways it's working, but it's just not quite at the efficiency level that you need. Based on what you know about your account, can this search term be optimized? Is there something you could do to improve performance here? Do you need to add it as a keyword and try and optimize and write some ad copies specifically? Or does it just not really convert at the rate that you want it to and you need to exclude it? Lastly, same thing for low CPA. Find those search terms that are converting really well beating your target CPA, you might wanna add those as keywords to your account and maybe look to extrapolate off of them further. When it comes to search term reviews, you're really just asking yourself which category of the three it needs to go in. Should this be added as a keyword, as a negative keyword, or should I leave it alone, let it perform here? Pretty simple. The next optimization we look at is ad copy. There are two different ways we do this. First, it's going to be the aggregate messaging, and second is more specific in ad group reviews. So let's take a look at an example of each of those. I navigated to the ads tab in the account, but actually for aggregate messaging, I like to use labels to make sure that I have all of my messages tagged so that I can see aggregate performance pretty easily. So let's head up to reports. I'm gonna click predefined, go down to labels, and then add. Now, although we have a good amount of these names blurred out, and I apologize for that, you can see here that even in an account that spends upwards of $200,000 a month, we have each of the different ads labeled to a point where I can come in here very easily and see which messaging is working best at an account level, not just within each ad group. Each of these line items represents a specific label, and whenever we wrote these ads, we applied the label that made the most sense for each one so that we could come in here and really easily say, this messaging is working, this one is not, and look to improve on it really quickly. But that's only one side of the story because at an account level, you might see trending performance one way. But that doesn't mean that it performs that way everywhere. Obviously, there are some of these variants that are doing really, really well, some that aren't doing as well. And if you can get away with doing just aggregate level testing, that's awesome. But sometimes we need to drill down a little bit further, especially into those higher volume ad groups, just to make sure that we're pausing the ads that don't work as well in that ad group, not just on the whole. So let's hop into another ad group here. And here I have three different ad variants that are running. At this point, they're now all RSAs, but you can see that the label that is that teal color definitely has the highest volume, but the purple one actually has the better cost per conversion. The green one is still beating the top one's cost per conversion, but that top one has the most volume associated with it. The click-through rate is certainly the highest there, but the conversion rate is lower. 
So at this point, we might want to make some decisions based on some of the ad copy testing stats practices that I talked about in this video that you can check out right here. But occasionally, we want to hop into individual ad groups, especially ones like this that are high volume, that might have conflicting stats compared to the aggregate level performance. The next thing we look at are going to be the modifier layers. Now, if you're using any sort of manual CPC or enhanced CPC, these are the layers that you can use and adjust bid modifiers for. And if you're using any sort of automated bidding, these are going to be good areas to check in regularly and make sure that you're not seeing too big of a deviation in performance to where you might need to adjust strategy for those specific pieces. So really quick, I'm just gonna walk you through where each one of these are so you can see them in the interface and start to review data for yourself. To see device level performance, you could either come over here onto the left and click devices, and you'll then be able to see the computer, tablet, and mobile performance for each of the different groups. Or while you're still on the campaigns tab, at a high level, you can choose to segment performance by device. The only suggestion I would make for which view you look at is based on which bidding strategies you use. If you're using any automated bid strategies, they're pretty much gonna ignore any of the device level bid modifiers you have in place. So this segmentation, probably an okay way to go because you're not gonna be able to do much about it anyway, unless you decide you want to completely exclude a device level category. Now, if you're using that manual CPC or enhanced CPC I talked about earlier, you're gonna to wanna to look at it from this devices report because then you can actually adjust the bid modifiers because then you can actually adjust the bid modifiers based on the performance you're seeing directly in that report. The second review is gonna be audiences. And that's just up here. You can then show the data table for all of your audience segments. And in this account, we don't have too many audience segments. But if you did, or you had either targeting or observation audiences in place, you could start to adjust the bids for those audiences with those manual bid strategies. The next is day parting, which Google calls ad schedule. So come over here to ad schedule, click the ad schedule itself. Again, this is an area where you can start to make the bid adjustments right within line based on the performance you see. At a really high level, you can review the day, hour, or day and hour combination for your account to make sure you're taking advantage of any daily or hourly trends. The last analysis is gonna be based on location. So again, just come over to the locations tab, go to locations report. And again, you'll be able to see each of the targeted locations that you have at the campaign level and the performance for each of them. Now for the last three of those bid modifiers, locations, ad schedule, and audiences, if you have not applied a specific data line item, it will not show up. In this first report here, you can see that Colorado is a targeted location within the campaign that we have blurred out. But if we were only targeting the United States, that's the only line item that would show up. You need to add in all the different locations that you wanna adjust bids for or see performance for before they'll show up in this report. And we talked about bids just a little bit. The last review that we do on a regular basis is to make sure that we're using the bid strategy that will work best for the account and all the settings are in place. So here are the three questions that we ask. Am I hitting my goals? Does this strategy need to be adjusted? And should I test another strategy? Again, I'm not gonna walk through this in the interface because I think this is relatively self-explanatory, but just a little bit of an overview. In the account that we've been bouncing around, for the majority of the time, it's been on manual or enhanced CPC. For a really long time, it was hitting its goals with those bid strategies in place, but only recently have we started to see things wane a little bit. The answer to the first question up until within the last year would have been yes. We'll retain those strategies if everything seems to be performing well and we're hitting goals. And we didn't see a need to adjust away from those because we were performing really well and we had a really high level of control. So the answer to question two, does the strategy need to be adjusted? No, we just stuck with it. But over time, as I mentioned, in the past year, performance started to wane a little bit. So we decided we should test another strategy. We have a handful of target CPA bid strategy experiments in place in the account. And honestly, they're performing pretty darn well. But over time, those strategies will need to be adjusted. We're currently focusing on a certain target CPA for our campaigns. But in a lot of accounts, over time, that target CPA needs to be adjusted. If you're trying to optimize for a $50 target CPA and all of your conversions are still coming through at $200, something like that, you might need to adjust. Something's not quite right. Google's usually pretty good at hitting whatever target CPA you set it if your expectations are reasonable and you have enough volume coming through those campaigns. We have another video that walks you through all of the automated bid strategies currently in the Google Ads platform. You can check out that video right here. 
but that's the last review type that we do that covers every single account that we're in. There are plenty of other adjustments that we make that are client specific based on the performance that they're seeing, what types of campaigns they're using, what strategies and tactics they're using, if they're bidding after competitors or not, which you can learn about in this video right here. But hopefully that gave you a good understanding of how we approach account optimization, gives you a good checklist to run through for your own campaigns, and will help you start optimizing your search campaigns to hit the goals that you need. If you have any other questions about any of these optimization strategies or search optimization in general, we'd love to hear your questions in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.